As an educator, I'm always on the lookout for new tools to help with the learning and teaching of music production concepts and techniques. And with the new Live 11.3 update, Ableton have introduced what I think is one of the best tools for learning and teaching sound synthesis, which is the new virtual analog style synthesizer, Drift. Now, this video isn't going to be a guide on learning synthesis with Drift. I'll do a video like that later on. Instead, what I want to focus on in this video is showcasing why I think this is one of the best tools for learning and teaching sound synthesis from both a student perspective and from a teacher perspective. So I hope you enjoy and without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first reason that I think Drift is one of the best synthesizers for learning and teaching sound synthesis is that it comes with all editions of Ableton Live, including Live Lite. Because of this, it is super accessible. And what that means is that even after your trial license of Suite expires, you'll still get access to the synthesizer on any edition that you have. From a teacher's perspective, this is really fantastic as it means it puts everyone on an even playing ground. And from a student's perspective, it means you don't have to worry about forking out a lot of money to get the highest version of Ableton Live, which is really the only version that comes with all of the other synthesizers. So having Drift available in every single edition of Live is super fantastic. And that's why it's the first reason on this list. The second reason why I think that Drift is one of the best tools for learning and teaching synthesis is its interface. So if we look at Drift here on the computer, we can see it's got a super streamlined interface. We have the oscillators on the left. We have a filter section here. We have our envelope section here in the middle, and then we've got modulators and then kind of global controls here. And there's no menu diving that needs to happen in order to kind of go through all of these different sections. It's all really clearly laid out. We can see oscillator mix, filter, envelopes, LFO. There's a tiny little tab here to switch between modulations and stuff. But other than that, everything is really clear, easily visible and easy to access. This is as opposed to a lot of other synthesizers out there with a lot of menu diving and flipping between different tabs and different modulators and stuff like that. Obviously, this does have some limitations, but from a learning and teaching perspective, this is super fantastic how easily and clearly this synthesizer is laid out. The third reason kind of follows on from that last reason in that it's really simple. On the surface, Drift offers a really simple approach to sound synthesis and offers pretty much only the main controls that you will need for any synthesizer. For example, here we've got really basic controls over oscillators. We've got a simple oscillator mix. We've got really simple filter controls with just a frequency and resonance control. There's a second high pass filter and then our envelopes only have four stages. There's only a single LFO, right? It's fairly simple and intuitive to use. Again, because of how it's laid out and how simple the interface is, it means there's no getting lost in the weeds, no trying to figure out what thing is doing what, but in saying that, it is still capable of some really fantastic and interesting things. And that leads nicely into point number four, which is that it also has some interesting advanced and unique features. As an example here, we get the ability to toggle our second envelope between a kind of one-shot envelope and a cycle mode, meaning that you effectively get a second LFO. And then on the flip side, we get the ability to toggle the LFO between an LFO and a kind of envelope with the last two linear and exponential envelope options. Our LFO also offers a whole bunch of different rate options here from milliseconds, hertz, synced, and also ratios, which is really fantastic. And then the whole drift section is also really unique in and of itself as well. And from a learning and teaching perspective, this is great because it shows students that not every synthesizer is the same and that every synthesizer offers its own set of unique and interesting features. And this leads you to understanding why you might choose one one synthesizer over another. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd love to invite you to leave a like and a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new and if you're really enjoying my content and videos, why not consider supporting me by heading on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can support me by buying me a coffee, downloading some cool stuff from my shop or supporting me on a monthly basis by becoming a member. There's a link down in the description. The fifth reason that I think that Drift is one of the best tools for learning and teaching sound synthesis is the oscilloscope section. So if we go to the oscillator, we can see here down in the bottom, this little oscilloscope, which shows us the waveform of the sum of the different oscillators in our mix. So for example, if I turn off oscillator two, we can see we just have a straight sawtooth wave. If I increase the volume, we can see that gets louder. I can now change my waveform to say a triangle wave or a sine wave or a kind of upward sawtooth wave. If I increase 
introduce the sine wave, we can see how that changes the waveform here. I can adjust the levels here. And even introducing the noise oscillator, we can see how that changes the shape of the waveform as well. So from a visual perspective, this is super useful to helping visualize what these waveforms actually look like and how they will combine together Together end result in whatever end result you have. As a side note, we can also see the effect of the shape control of oscillator one. So if I turn down oscillator two and the noise oscillator, we can see what happens when I increase the shape when I'm on the sawtooth wave, or if I increase the shape on the sine wave, or even on the triangle wave. And that shape control is really fantastic because it actually changes depending on what oscillator waveform we have chosen. And the final reason that I think that Drift is one of the best tools for learning and teaching sound synthesis is that it sounds really awesome and it's super easy to get a fantastic sound right out of the gate with only a few steps. So as an example, I could turn my oscillator one to a sawtooth wave, have oscillator two turned down. And if I just turn down my filter, and then I could increase say the level of oscillator two and a little bit of the noise oscillator as well. really nice sounds right out of the gate, of course, with a lot of modulation capabilities as well. And when learning and teaching sound synthesis, this is super important because it can get really boring listening to just a sawtooth wave over and over and over again. And so having really easy access to certain controls to shape the timbre of the sound in a really pleasing way is super useful. And so for all those reasons, I know that I will be using Drift a lot when it comes to me teaching students the basics of sound synthesis. If you'd like to learn some more interesting things about Ableton Live devices, check out this video right here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and I'll see you all in the next video.